looked at the house together. And we're going through the house and like, this is really cool. It's perfect. We can do this here. We can do that there. We can put this here. We can put that there. We had a lot more furniture at this point. And then it hit us. This house that we are in now, still 20 some years later, is exactly the same house we had looked at earlier. Not the same house in the same place, but the physical layout of the house. And the manufacturer of the house, Toll Brothers, was exactly the same. It was exactly the same. Hey y'all, and welcome to the Cash Flow Podcast, where we're gonna talk about everything related to the money in your small business. I'm your host, Pam, and without further ado, we're gonna jump right into our episode. Hey, welcome back. We're going a little off topic from finance today, but only a little bit, because I think in everybody's world, manifesting around financials is one of those things we all talk about doing. So today's show is three things to do to make manifesting work for you. And it comes directly from my own experience. There are a number of stories like this when I think on them, and I actually journal and write them all down because I do think it's important to remember every time we wonder how much power we really have over our own lives. And this particular story goes way, way back to when Deb and I first met 33 years ago now in Wilmington, Delaware. And we lived together. Yes, we lived together in sin before marriage because it wasn't a thing then. And we lived in Delaware in an apartment, relatively small apartment, had a main room. The piano took up most of the space. We had a single bathroom, two bedrooms, kind of like most couples start out. And we one day decided we were going to go do some house hunting. We knew we weren't buying a house. We just want to go look at some houses. You know, why not? So we did. We went out and we toured a few places, but there was one particular house that we toured. Um, Kind of ashamed to say because we know the quality of them, but oh, I shouldn't say that out loud, but I did. Whoops. But it was a Toll Brothers house. It was a pretty standard Toll Brothers house. Four bedroom, front staircase, back staircase, family room, living room, dining room, kitchen, Upstairs, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, basement. And we both kind of went, wow, you know, that's kind of cool. Think of what we could do with a space like this. And as we left, we just happened to spend the rest of that day. We went somewhere for lunch, probably charcoal pit, and chatted about it. We were like, God, what would we do with this room? What would we do with that room? And we just were thinking about it and picturing it. Not saying, oh my God, we really want that house someday, or God, we're not going to make it until we have a house like that, or geez, could we be that rich someday? It wasn't that kind of a conversation. It was just a very casual, what would we do with that house if we had it? At the time, we didn't have enough furniture to fill it. So we talked about where would we shop for the furniture, or would we have a room without furniture, or what color would we make the walls? What kind of candles will we have set out in the room? Which room would we use? Which room would If we have kids, would they use? Would we make an office? So we chit-chatted about it, probably for, you know, over lunch and the ride, two, two and a half hours just casually and for fun. And then we forgot about it. Totally, utterly forgot about it. Went on with our careers. We had another 20 years, actually 10 years together there at DuPont. I had met her 10 years into my DuPont career. And we had another 10 years there just doing our jobs, living in that apartment, moved to another apartment, got a small house in Chester County, living our lives, having a great time. And then the business we were with, which was DuPont Pharmaceuticals, decided to sell. And so it did. And in that sale, we decided one of us would stay with the new entity, which bought our business, which was Bristol Myers Squibb, and one of us would not. And the better opportunity there was for Deb, the one that was more interesting to her than the opportunity I would have had. So she very generously said, hey, you go find something new. I got this. And as part of that, because we were moving from DuPont in Delaware and she needed to be up in New Brunswick for work, I ended up getting a job down in Northeast Philadelphia at something called PCI Packaging. Hey, shout out to my buddies from PCI. And Deb started her job up in New Brunswick. So we needed to get a house that kind of split the difference a little bit. And as it was happening, because she was migrating up here and I was still working down there, closing out the old deal, she would come up and house hunt and I wasn't with her. And the only thing I said was, hey, we've been living in this house with no inside garage forever. Please just get us a house with an attached garage. I don't know why that was important, but it was important to me at the time. She said, okay, anything else? And I said, no, not really. That's really all I care about. Go, go do that. 
And that was back in the days when we had a really nice relocation package, blessedly, from Bristol Myers Squibb. So we were able to do that in a leisurely fashion and find the house. And Deb found this house and said, hey, should I buy it? And I'm like, do you like it? She said, yes. And I said, okay, go buy it. And we did. And I had not seen it. It was sight unseen. So one weekend before we had moved in, we took a ride up and looked at the house together. And we're going through the house and like, this is really cool. It's perfect. We can do this here. We can do that there. We can put this here. We can put that there. We had a lot more furniture at this point. And then it hit us. This house that we are in now, still 20 some years later, is exactly the same house we had looked at earlier. Not the same house in the same place, but the physical layout of the house. And the manufacturer of the house, Toll Brothers, was exactly the same. It was exactly the same layout we had looked at at that point 10 years before. And now we're living in that house and we're still living in that house. So what's the lesson in this to me? What did I pull out of this? I pulled out of this three things to do to make manifesting work for you. We did it accidentally. Now I try and do it intentionally. The first thing we did was... We recognized that it was something we liked and made us happy. And we talked about it. Not as if, wow, couldn't I have that? But hey, what would we do if we had that? How can we enjoy that conversation and just make it something fun? Not wishful, not hopeful, not aspirational. Just, wouldn't it be fun if? And played that out for two hours. The second thing we did was we stopped thinking about it. Again, not intentionally, accidentally. We just had fun with it and then forgot. And then the third thing we did was we didn't just sit on our laurels. We knew that was representative of things that we wanted to do with our lives. So we went to work and stayed at work, kept having fun, but kept working to build the lives we wanted to build, not recognizing that we had 10 years before painted for ourselves vividly the picture we were going to be living 10 years from then. Now, I've had example after example of this. I'll do another podcast later with another example that's very similar to this, eerily similar to this, that was equally as mind-blowing when I realized what had happened. But just to kind of seal this one up, three things about manifesting that worked for us in that situation, and I think work for everybody if they can get themselves to do it, is the first is, as you're wanting something or thinking about something you want in your life, just imagine it as if it was. What would you be doing with it if it was? Not with wishful or hopeful or aspirational or maybe someday, but just what would I do if I had this thing? And then put it aside. Number two, put it aside. And then number three, just go about your life. So visualize it, enjoy it in the moment, not as if. Number one, just visualize it and enjoy it right now. Two, stop thinking about it. Move on to the next thing. Go back to your life. Three, keep doing what you know you need to do to get the life you want to get. Those are three things I suggest that you try to make manifesting work for you. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. I hope that video was helpful and I hope you subscribe to my channel for more information on finances in your business.